Hello everybody, MD here at a noisy Range US. Today we've got something that is unusual for me. It is the Walther P5. It's got the nice Neil, I believe they're the Neil grips. Um, but not something you see around every day. It's in perfect shape. We'll take a look at it in the tabletop. And it came with all the paper, original paperwork, original buttons. Laser. And it's going to be, of course, a millimeter fucking grain. I hope you can hear me because it's really noisy. And single stack round. And we'll see, we're seven rounds out. As I mentioned before, I've been lately, my sh shaking hands. I don't know why. We're going to try with a nine o'clock hold. Wow, that was high. Beautiful trigger though, very, very good. That was bad. Hold. Ow. What a smooth trigger. Throwing a lot of rounds here. Never shot it before, so I need to get you. And it locks open right away. There you go. Very, very smooth. I enjoyed shooting that. Something I can get used to. Let me turn you around. We can see. As I said before, good or bad, you get the way it is what it is. So here we are, but also up here. So this was not the gun. I could feel it. That was absolutely me, but here but I could definitely get used to this. We're gonna take a look at it at the tabletop, but pretty awesome, Walther P5. Now let's go back to the... Okay, we're back. What a wonderful shooting experience. This gun is such a soft shooter. Just mechanically, you can feel the quality and it's such a joy to shoot. Today we're going to do things a little bit differently. And what we're going to do is I'm going to disassemble the gun first. YouTube that is for maintenance and cleaning of the firearm is not altering a firearm. But there's something about the internals of this that I want you to see. And YouTube tells me that about 90% of the viewers are not subscribed. So if you feel I've earned it, that would be of tremendous help for me if you can click that subscription button and notification bell and the notification needs to be set to all because the default is personalized. And also it tells me that about, for the most part, you hang around or most viewers hang around for about five minutes into the video. So if I do this towards the end, most people won't get to see it. Then we'll get back on track. But what I want you to see is that one of the things they did in um, with this version, this is the version six, and we'll go through it a little bit more, is you got all your controls right here, your decocker, your slide stop, your takedown lever. And to stop, to, to lock it back, let's first, it's got a heel mag release. So we do that. Then your slide stop is right there. So we pull it back and stop it. And your disassemble lever is right here. You pull it back, down, I'm sorry, and then Here's your slide release, which is also your decocker. You release it, and off it goes. And I want you to listen to this. Let me put it back together. Oops, there goes the barrel. Another thing I want to show you is, look at the, listen to the slide. I mean, it's really like it's in ball bearings. And what I wanted you to see is look at this engineer and look at this. Look at the size of the rails that is full length, but also dual recoil springs. And if you wait until the middle end of the video to show you this, most people wouldn't see it. But look at this engineering. Just absolutely gorgeous. All right. And then, as you saw, the barrel started to slide out. 
And I wanted to show you something that is very different. It's kind of difficult to do it off looking through the camera. All right, but to get the slide to release, you press this button and then it goes out. Okay. And look at this. Come on, focus. There you go. Look at this barrel. Look at the work on it. And this is the button that you press to either release the release it or put it back in. Now, another thing I wanted you to see is look at the work on the slide. I hope the light is catching this. There we go. I mean, look at the work, the amount of milling. And then I want you to hear this and hopefully the mic will catch it. Look, look at this. Can you hear it? It's like a tuning fork. Let me put it closer to the mic and maybe you can hear it better. I hope that came through on the microphone. I've never seen that before on a slide. Just the work, the quality of the steel is absolutely incredible. To reassemble it, it goes in. You press that button and you're in. So look at that. And to put it together, just the rails go in. You lock it back. Turn the lever. And you're back on. We test our function and we're ready. So I wanted you to see that right from the beginning because it is truly truly remarkable and I am going to geek out on you a little bit on the details like I told you and um, so let's start with that this is a nine millimeter but it was also available in nine by 21 it is hammer fired the action is double action single action it is a short recoil operating operating system very much like the Beretta 92 the barrel is 3.50 3.54 inches. The capacity is a single stack, eight plus one in two metal mags, like this. It's got two of them. Heel mag release, as we said. It weighs 31.22 ounces unloaded. And price-wise, it's gonna really depend on the quality, what comes with it, and um, not quality, it's the condition. That's a better way to say it. What condition it is, what comes with it, if you get all the paperwork like this one. It's got the original paperwork, it's got the original target, the warranty, the original box, and the two mags. The other thing that is also going to make a difference is the grips. It originally came with, um, the way it was issued, especially to the Dutch police, it came with plastic panels, pl plastic grips. Now, Walther also issued some models with wood grips but the design was different. To me, this, these seem to be nil grips, which are my favorite, all-time favorites, but not sure yet on that. So I already showed you what it came with. I put this aside. This is, if you want to see it, this is the original box. The P5 really ended the reign of the P38. And it was originally introduced due to the Olympic attacks in Munich in 1972. And it was at the same time that HK produced the P7 and Sig Sauer produced the P6. It is believed that Walther produced about 100,000 of the P5s. And that was done between 1978 and 1993, with roughly about half of that production, about 50,000, excuse me, going to the Dutch police. Also, there seem to be eight different variations of the P5. This one in front of you is a P5, and it is the six variation. And the way you can tell that it is the six variation, and let me see if the focus will let, let catch, show it. It is, you see in, on the takedown lever, let me see if I can get more focus. There you go. On the takedown lever, you can see the four-pointed star and also the texture on the takedown lever. Before, up to generation five, 
The takedown lever was smooth, so it was kind of hard to, it was slippery. It was difficult to get a hold of. It's got a little ledge here at the bottom too. It's, it's not flat, it's kind of curved, if you can see that, with texture. So now it's very easy to get a hold of. And you got, so you got the textured lever and you got that four pointed star. So that's the deadly, the dead giveaway that this is a generation six. Now looking at it from top to bottom, like we usually do, the other interesting features here, the slide, not only I love the millwork, look at the, the machining that was done here. There's no serrations on the front. You get your serial number, like Walther always has it on the left of the slide here, the older Walthers. The name, you got nice light serrations in the back. Uh, they're not very deep, but they're definitely usable. I love this area here, how it was cut down. The top of the slide has is, is got serrations to reduce the glare. You've got sights that are fixed sights. You got a white dot in the front. The rear is serrated and it's got the white notch. So it's a post and dot lollipop up there. And the rear is fully adjustable for windage. As you he see here, and the rear is adjustable also for elevation by interchangeable rear notch inserts. So you can put inserts there to raise the rear sight, but it's not immediately, um, it's not immediately adjustable by the screw. Come on, there we go. There were two versions of, very, of, the, of this gun. The, there were eight variations, but two versions of it. This one, which is the compact, and also another one, which is the L, which is also known as the P5L, and that was a longer barrel. I don't know exactly how what the length of that barrel was, but... Another interesting thing of the slide, as you can see here, the ejector, ejector port is not on the right hand side like most guns it's on the left side and that was done let me lock this back that was done so as a right-handed shooter if you had a malfunction it would eject you could check it facing you instead of having to t turn the gun this way to see what was going on now while shooting it you may say, well, was that, was it throwing the casings to your face? Was it you know, distracting to see the, ca the, the casings ejecting this way? And the answer is no. It, it just, it never, it was never an issue. And let you look at it there. Just absolutely beautiful. Now let's look at the trigger. And as we, we can see, it's unloaded. Let the focus catch up a little bit. There we go. So double action, single action, as you can see, has got a trigger stop, the travel adjustment right there. It is very smooth. Now the double action is gonna be coming in right a five average pull. I'm not gonna do it here in front of you, but I do have my trigger gauge. The five average pull was coming in at about eight pounds little bit under sometimes a little bit more but it averaged out about eight pounds and the single action was coming in right at four pounds so double action very smooth very very smooth double action and using the spurred hammer here the hammer is textured now it's single action you're right there at the wall four pounds and the reset, right there. Very nice. I really like this trigger. One thing to show you that is interesting, the drop safe, and I hope the, the light cooperates. So what's very interesting is you see the pin right there, right? And it all, it, when the hammer rests, it's out of alignment with a firing pin. So that's one of the awesome safety mechanisms of this gun. And as you can see here, it is only 
that the firing pin aligns with the hammer when you start to pull the trigger. You see that? There is out of alignment, so it's impossible for it to fire. There is back in alignment. Now you can pull the trigger and fire. So I thought that was very neat. Just awesome piece of engineering, good peace of mind. It's impossible to fire there. Now it can fire. So just awesome engineering all the way around. It is an aluminum frame with a blued finish. This slide also has a blued finish. And I already talked to you, we got your slide stop, decocker and slide release, and your takedown lever, which is take textured. We talked about the spurred hammer. And the trigger guard is one of the th few things that I wish was a little bit different. And that is because with medium sized hands, I do have enough room, but I can only imagine if somebody with bigger fingers and with gloves or both, you're gonna run out of room very quickly. Now it still has that little peak here, like uh, you also see it on HKs, but HKs, some of them have it further back. So when you pull the trigger and if your finger is a little bit down on the trigger shoe, you're also, you, it, it rubs against it and it's very uncomfortable, at least for me. Walther has it up front and it's completely out of the way. Talking about the trigger, you can see the trigger shoe has serrations. So that's a nice touch. The grip, it's got, like I said, we have, I believe this isn't, these are nil grips. It's got texture in the front, just vertical lines. Uh, they don't do much. The gun, you know, when it's, when it recoils, it goes this way. So if anything, and I've said this before, I wish they would do it horizontally instead of vertically, but it is what it is. There's no texture in the back. Their grips wrap around all the way to the back. Now, like a finally made 1911, you can see here the fit is just absolutely perfect on both sides. You run your fingers up and down. You, you just don't feel anything. It feels like it's one piece of metal. Show you the front. There you go. And no, I'm not pointing it at myself and you, nothing's going to happen to you. But also here, you can see the there's different parts of the metal meeting here. And when you run your finger across it, you don't feel anything. I mean, the fit is absolutely superb. Going to the bottom you, from the trigger guard, you do have some sort of an undercut here. So it's very easy to get up, get high and not get any sort get any sort of uh, Glock knuckle or anything like that. And finally at the bottom, you've got your mag. That you've got a kind of shoehorn in there. But your mag release is at the heel and it pops out really nicely. I enjoy the heel release. I much prefer the paddle release and they got plenty of room here for it, but that'll do as well. So there's your release. So overall, an absolutely fantastic gun. Mechanically, engineering wise, probably one of the best I've ever had in the channel. And I'm very happy to bring it to you. A piece of history and one of my all time favorites. I very much look forward to your comments. Let me know what you think of the P5. And if you own one, I would love to hear your thoughts, your experiences on it. Also, please remember that I upload videos every Wednesday morning and when I can on Friday mornings as well. Actually, it's the other way around. Friday mornings and when I can on Wednesday mornings. A little tired. And also very active on Instagram. And there you can find what's coming down the pipeline to the channel way before it hits YouTube. So if you'd like to give me a follow there as well, I would very much appreciate it. Once again, thank you very much for stopping by. And until the next time, God bless.